Friends, today I have a really fun homestead day in life. I thought I would show you my planner for 2023. Every year I buy a new planner in January and it covers July through the next year's July. And so I'm gonna show you guys this year's planner. I'm gonna show you guys some homestead things that we've got in the works right now. I've also got to organize my kitchen and I bought some new containers to organize it with. So I thought today it would just be a lot of fun to have a little homestead chit chat and a homestead Homestead day in the life. The first thing I'm going to tackle is underneath the island. Okay, this isn't really an island. We still need to build our island. For now, it's just a kitchen table that I found secondhand for 40 four bucks, something like that. Anyways, underneath of it is a disaster, as you can see, and I need to clean this out, make more use of the dead space under here. I also have some cabinet drawers that I would like to clean out and repurpose. So that's what I'm working on in this scene. So what I'm doing here is I am emptying out some drawers and I'm going to be loading them into these bins. These are items that I don't use very often and I want to use these drawers for items that I use almost daily. I've also got a whole bunch of baking goods that I would like closer to my baking area. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be clearing out some spaces in these closets so I can put things down here like my Instant Pot and things that I don't use every day a little further away from the kitchen since I don't use them very often. Recently, I just did a little research on the safest dinnerware, and I was really surprised. I thought my dinnerware was safe. Come to find out, it's not. I was not surprised to learn that blue and red and like colored dinnerware like this, and definitely ones that don't have a brand on the bottom, I was not surprised to learn that these are not safe. I knew that, but I didn't realize that even white ceramic dinnerware like this is a mainstay plate. I didn't realize that this can be unsafe as well. This was made in China. And this, you can, I don't know if you can see in the picture, but the finish is starting to wear off. And I had been noticing that. And that's what prompted me to research. When it stops being shiny and it starts getting really dull looking, your finish is wearing off. And there are certain chemicals in the plate that can leach onto the food. And I didn't realize that that could happen even with white ceramic or stoneware. Ceramic and stoneware are some of the worst. And then also dishes like this are really not that safe to eat off of. So I'll save these for like really special occasions because I love them. But I started noticing, you know, like the colors are getting a little bit faded. Well, you know, think about it. Where's that color going? It's going into the food. So it's really important to make sure your dinnerware are safe. And I did a little research and I found out that stainless steel is the safest to eat off of, but the next safest is of course Corel. The reason I didn't have Corel before is because I've heard if a kid drops this, a lot of times it won't break. But if it does break, it shatters into thousands of pieces. That's what I was told by somebody years ago. So I decided not to have this in our home because I didn't want it getting shattered into thousands of pieces. Of course, it says break and chip resistant. So it is pretty strong and I decided I'm gonna go ahead and do this and you guys, you won't believe what I did. So I bought six plates from Walmart. They cost over 21 bucks for the six plates. Went to the second hand store. I ended up finding a plethora of plain white. You don't want the kind that has paint on it or any kind of markings on it. You want the plain white because it's the safest. But I went to the second hand store. I found eight of the large sizes and I don't even know how many. I lost count of how many of the, the lunch plate sizes I found. And I found them all for less than two bucks a plate. 
the small ones were like $1.50 something a plate and then the large ones were $1.95. So if you're needing to replace your dinnerware, I would go with Corel because it's one of the safest to eat off of. It is made in the USA, which is nice, and it's a lot more non-toxic than your other options for dinnerware. Also, pottery, sadly, is not one of the safest things because once that shine starts to go away and that finish starts wearing off, the chemicals inside the stoneware can leach into your food. So it's really important to keep a good eye on your pottery. This is my absolute favorite kind of dinnerware and cooking ware, but once that finish starts wearing off, you gotta get rid of it or use it for another purpose besides food. Homestead fun over here, you guys. Guess what I'm doing over here? I am rendering fat. So exciting. This is cutting edge entertainment over here, you guys. Check it out. What am I doing with this? I am gonna make soap. So I'm saving all of the fats that we have from just whatever we do with cooking. And I'm gonna make soap. So I'm rendering this. I've got, this is a second rendering over here. And over here, this might be hot. I've got, see it's almost clear. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that's almost clear and that's grease in there. And over here I have a mold. Can you guys see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I'm going to join the whole soap making wagon thing, whatever you want to call it. I have been researching how easy it is to make soap lately and it looks so simple. So I decided this will be a great project to do with the kids here at our homestead. Also homestead related, we canned beans this week. I am just gearing up for spring and summer. I don't want to be cooking beans in the spring and the summer. I just want to open a can. And so we are taking all of our dried beans and we're canning them. This is three canner loads here. We homeschool and our oldest kids are in high school. The two oldest are in high school. The oldest is a senior and he's getting ready to wrap up his school journey and graduate. And then my daughter's in 10th grade. And this year they have agriculture and home economics and life skills as electives. I started learning homesteading about 25 years or more ago, and so I have had so much fun. I don't know if they've had fun, but I've had fun teaching them everything I know about homesteading and ag, home economics. It's just been a lot of fun. Speaking of homesteading, you guys, look at this super-sized egg we got about a week and a half ago. I, I haven't wanted to use it. I've just had it sitting out. It's still got the bloom on it, uh, but I've had it sitting out because I just don't want to use it. I just want to look at it a little bit longer. It's so big. The rest of these eggs, just to give you a size comparison, the rest of the eggs in here are probably medium to large, and that one right in the middle is, it's super sized. You guys, look at what my oldest son bought me for my birthday. I have been wanting this cookbook volume set for so long. This is such a lovely cookbook set and I've been having so much fun learning the art of French cooking. I did, however, have to buy some new pans. If you've been following me a while, you know I have been collecting cast iron. Actually, my husband has been the one collecting most of the cast iron. He's got a thing for cast iron. I am getting rid of some of my cast iron because I had to make some space for some larger pans here that are stainless steel because with French cooking, a lot of the recipes include wine and you can't use wine with cast iron. So I found these secondhand, really good deal. As you can see, they're copper bottomed and they have a nice heavy aluminum coating on the bottom and they're stainless steel. They're in really good condition. I found a 12 inch and an eight inch, both second hand. And I've also been adding to my copper collection here. So I've got the cast iron and the copper and I think they look so pretty up here. To clean them, I have a solution here of two cups of white vinegar with two tablespoons citric acid and I just dissolve those together. It's best if you heat it up, but it makes the shiniest copper finish. Rendering that fat is working out really well this time of year because all I have to do is take these pans with the water and the fat and then I put it on the wood cook stove and then I bring them out here and set them in the snow bank and within an hour or two they're ready to be brought back inside. I scrape the fat off the top once it's hard, pour out the water and then start the process again. And yeah, it's going really well this time of year. <laughs> It'll be harder in the summertime, so I probably won't do this in the summer very often, especially when I'm doing the gardens too. Another super fun little homestead project I've got going on that is a little more along the sustainability lines is candle making. So I didn't make these. What I'm doing is when I'm done using candles like this, beeswax candles, there's always melt off. And I don't want to just throw it away. I mean, that's 
precious beeswax. So what I do is I take the melt off and I just collect it and save it. When I have enough, I melt it down in one of these little cast iron pans. I've got an old recycled candle jar here and some wick that I got off of Amazon. And I am just repurposing all that melted down wax and making candles in these jars. chai tea you guys first thing I'm gonna show you guys is the piggy paint nail polish I got this for my daughter and she's standing right there waiting for me to give this to her <laughs> so we're gonna open this first so she doesn't have to wait any longer I got some non-toxic piggy paint nail polish for my little girl I got the little bundle pack there are four different nail polish colors in here okay here you go oh and there's stickers in this little bag too you guys so it's a super fun little nail polish Kit if you've got little girls. A couple of months back, I noticed I had some really drastic hair loss. We had gotten sick last fall, and so I don't know if that had something to do with it, but I lost a good portion of my hair. I want to say I probably lost maybe it seemed like a quarter of my hair or more a friend of mine said that normally apparently doctors say you don't really notice hair loss until you've lost around 50 percent of your hair so maybe i lost more than that i don't know but i've been working on getting my hair to grow back and it is but one of the things i'm doing are supplements to get my hair to grow back and this is a new one i'm trying i've been doing a biotin keratin supplement and so I'm switching to this to see how well I like it. I'll keep you posted, but it's pretty much the same thing as what I've been taking. It's got biotin and keratin, which is what I've been taking only from another brand. So I'm excited to try this and see how well it works. More body products here. I have one of my favorite lotions. I just love this lotion. It's spicy vanilla chai. I love the chai, as you can tell. I, I've got this tantric chai tea and chai lotion here. I've been using this chai lotion for years. It's one of my favorite lotions. I will say that when it comes to like really moisturizing, it's not the best, but it does pretty well. And for the scent, Mm, it's good you guys. It's really good. It's worth it. Speaking of chai, uh, this tea is wonderful. This is a tantric chai tea. I got this for both me and my daughter. We love chai tea. This is a little different. This is, has ashwagandha and I'm thinking this has to do with like women's health. But ashwagandha is one of the herbs that my naturopath has me on, and I do notice a big difference when I'm taking ashwagandha. So I'm excited to have that in this tea that I will be enjoying daily. Also for tea, ginger, organic ginger. I love to take the organic ginger and do slices with it and make tea, lemon ginger tea with this. It's so wonderful and warming, especially this time of year. We go through a lot of red wine vinegar and then this was a really good price. I think it was around $20 for this gallon of red wine vinegar. And I'll use this in salad dressings. I will use it in marinades. It's just one of our favorite vinegars flavor wise to use when we're cooking. Kind of all over the place here. I'm not showing you guys everything in any particular order. This is Dandy Blend. I'm trying to cut back on my coffee consumption. This is gonna help me with that. Dandy Blend is delicious. I don't like to get generic baking powder from the store because most of it has aluminum in it. So I get this from Azure Standard and I always order a big quantity. We go through this in quite a short amount of time because we are a big family. This is a pound of baking powder. Citric acid. If you guys haven't started using citric acid in your cleaning routines, you are missing out. So what I like to do is I take about two cups of vinegar, which is white, regular vinegar, simmer it on the stove with about two tablespoons of citric acid. You guys will be amazed at how quickly this solution makes your pots and pans super shiny. It decalcifies them and gets all the hard minerals that have built up on your pots and pans off within seconds. And it also cleans your sinks, it descales your sinks and your bathtubs as well. 
these have been in my cart off and on for months now. I've been buying small little quantities of sesame seeds and I decided I'm just going to get a whole large quantity. So this is five pounds of brown sesame seeds. I got the brown because it's supposed to be more nutritious. The white ones of course taste better to me, but <laughs> these are supposed to be more nutritious and they're raw, raw sesame seeds. I will be using the sesame seeds in breads to crust the tops of the bread, as well as oriental foods. I make Asian food probably once or twice a month, and so I like to use sesame seeds for that. Normally, I buy a whole case, like four of these at a time. I have not ordered in about three months. If you're new here, you don't know this, but for those of you that aren't new here, you know we live on a mountain, and it's kind of hard to get off the mountain in the winter time, and I don't always want to have to get off the mountain if we've just had a storm. And of course, when your Azure order arrives, you have no say as to when you're gonna go pick it up. So you have to basically be there when the truck is there. And this last time that I ordered before this, the truck was a couple hours late and I was already off the mountain. I needed to be back at home on the mountain within a certain time frame, and so it was kind of a disaster. So I decided that while the bad weather is continuing, I was just gonna skip ordering for a couple months. So I skipped ordering for about two months. And so this, this order this month was a little bigger than normal because I, I was out of quite a few things. I, like I said, normally I would order a larger quantity of the hand soap. I would get a whole case of four of these big jugs, but I needed to keep the cost down this time, so I just got one. This is the Citrus Fragrance Hand Soap. I've started making more of our own pasta. My egg basket here is normally full of eggs from our chickens. We have over 40 hens. And this is an actual supersized egg. This is like an extra, extra large egg we got a couple weeks ago. Um, so it's, if it looks a little abnormally big, it is. I'm just kind of sitting here to look at for a couple more days because we're just so proud of this egg. But normally this whole basket is full of eggs. So I'm trying to think of more ways to use the eggs. I've got angel food cakes I've been making. I've got just like souffles and quiches. But pasta is one of the things that I like to make from scratch. I have a gluten-free recipe and I have a recipe that is just regular flour. I like to do semolina flour when I make pasta though. I think it makes a better pasta. So nor I would normally not buy such a small quantity, but again, I was trying to keep the cost down this month and I knew that I wouldn't be making a ton of pasta this month. Next month, I might order 25 pounds of the organic semolina flour though. Okay, I love the Azure Clean products for cleaning my house. I have the floor cleaner, I have the laundry soap, which I love, and a few of the other products like the Stench X. I am not crazy about Azure Clean dish soap though. It doesn't lather very well and I don't feel like it degreases very well and we just go through so much of it. I decided to switch to this. My only concern with this is sometimes with other dish soap brands, I will get a, a rash on my hands. I will get like an eczema or dermatitis. I'm not sure. I think the doctor said it was eczema one time when I asked her about it. So some dish soaps I'm kind of sensitive to, and it seems like I've tried this before, and I can't remember if I was sensitive to it or not. I'm hoping it works out though, because I, I do need to switch dish detergent brands to something that's a little bit better about degreasing since we do go through so many dishes a day here. This is 6% hydrogen peroxide. It's an antiseptic, antibacterial. I like to use hydrogen peroxide. I like to mix it myself in a solution that's a little bit stronger. So this is a little stronger than the stuff you would get at the grocery store. And then over here we have our bulk foods. I got 50 pounds of hard white wheat, 25 pounds of black beans, 25 pounds of pinto beans, and then I have 50 pounds of organic rolled oats back there. That's it, I hope you enjoyed this Azure haul portion of the video. Here is my 2023 planner. Free Black Friday, I ordered the coming years planner and I messed up when I did this. I wrote 2022 up in the corner. It's actually 2023, this planner is. But anyways, this is one of my favorite planner companies because it's customizable. I, I love being able to customize the sections and I had to order a really large one this year because I needed more sections in the back than what would fit in the smaller planner. So I will show you guys what I got here and do a little quick 
super quick planner flip through. So the beginning of the planner has these two sections. One is for the month and then one is for you to customize ideas, plans, and goals. And I like writing things in here like our cleaning schedule. For example, like up here I'll probably have our cleaning schedule for Friday. Over here I'll have the cleaning schedule for Saturday. I like writing other things here as well, just things I need to remember. Another thing I'll write in here sometimes is like recipes, like really common recipes we use really often, but I don't want to have to jump in the cookbook all the time for. I'd rather have them closer. Always starts out in August because I use a school here. That's how I like to plan. And so that's a part of the reason I like to order my planners well before the coming school year. I like to order them in November so that in January and February when I'm doing my planning and make, taking notes for the upcoming school year, I've got the planner already on hand. I also like to have the planner for garden planning purposes. So this is, this is my previous planner here and um, you can see there's not much for December. Um, but this is, you can see the size comparison too. This, I, I like this size better, but I could not fit everything I needed to in this size. So I had to order a larger planner. This planner goes all the way into July and then this one picks up in August where this one leaves off. And I like to have, like I said, I like to have the upcoming planner for the year ahead well in advance because I always end up needing it well in advance. So for each month we have goals and then we have birthdays, events, things to remember. And then there's two more sections here. And over here we have a place for notes. Then we have the whole scope of the month. So you've got the whole calendar here, which is nice. I have my sections completely customized here. So I will show you what I've got you guys. Okay, so I've got a section up here for don't forget. This is for appointments and priorities. Here's the kids and the family section. So anything that the kids need to remember or that I need to remember for the kids or certain things that the kids need to remember to do, like certain assignments they might need to get turned in or specific chores, they get written in here. And then here's meals. This is where I write all the meals that we're gonna be having for the day. This is just one day here. This is uh, Wednesday the 2nd of August. And so this is all the meals. And what I like to do is write the leftovers so that no foods are forgotten in the refrigerator. And I will write all the leftovers for the coming week or whatever foods we have planned out. And I will write it right in this section here. This isn't the section where I write things that I need to cook. That will go over here. This is just the food that we have on hand that we need to remember to eat or the food that's planned so the kids can see what's planned for the day. Down here we have a section that I put for Bible verses. This is a little section, because I always I always keep my old planners. I don't throw them away. So I have a little section here for things we're praying for or something we're grateful for or a memoir, something I want to remember. And over here I have everything related to homemaking and work. So this is homemaking, homesteading, work things, garden things, uh, things I need to bake or if I need to film something, all of that goes in this section here. The back of the planner month. So this isn't the back of the planner, this is in each section. So this whole section here is August. You can have this part customized with this planner company. You can have these sections put in the back of the planner, entire planner, if you want to. I like them with each month. So this is the monthly cleaning. We've got kitchen and dining, anything that needs to be done in that area, living room, bedrooms, bathrooms, office, bonus room. Over here, I'm not sure if you can see it, we have another section for notes. There's two sections for notes. So the next monthly cleaning section, so we have this page over here that I just read, and then we have this side over here, and this is just for whatever you need. So I'll probably have the chicken coop over here. I'm gonna write that down just so I don't forget, but I'm gonna write chicken coop. We'll have the chicken coop cleaning schedule outlined here. Over here we have my blog and I don't really blog anymore. This is actually, I got this for YouTube and it's got important dates and holidays, priorities, giveaway and review notes, advertising sponsor notes to do this month and then post idea brainstorm. And again, I used to have an entire planner just for this. I found that I needed this part with me with my regular planner because I would have ideas for things or my YouTube planning planner would not be with me, but the other one would. So I wanted everything all in one planner this year, which is why I chose this bigger one. Here's where I can write down all the YouTube titles and everything I'm working on where everything there is at. So over here is kind of neat. I have a shopping list. I've got household shopping list, homestead, produce, pantry shopping list, anything dairy, clothing, anything from Azure and Amazon we need. And that pretty much wraps this planner up, guys. 
It's a super simple planner and like I said, like I said, super fast planner flip through. In the back, I've got plain paper for notes. It's got a section here for sleeves and just things I need to save papers. And then I've got, these are just clear page protectors where I can slide important papers into these sections. And I think there's three of them. One thing I like about this planner company is that they have covers that you can pick from. They're completely customizable and they've got a really hard, sturdy cover for them. So it kind of keeps them from getting water damaged. This too, this cover is super sturdy as well. Sun. 